And a reminder, the first 30 minutes of this podcast are available on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Google, and many of the major platforms. The full podcast is available at www.patreon.com forward slash SRB Media. SRB Media. Good evening, Gabby. Good evening, TC, and welcome all to our weekly podcast, Terry Curran's current view with the Island of Hillsborough, Mr. Terry Curran. Did you really get a bollocking after that goal that you scored at Bramble Lane? There wasn't one game. <laughs> I think I got a bollocking <laughs> after the Loon after the Loon game when he when he mentioned me about playing for England. Right. Yes, it's true. Jack had always got to let steam off. He always had to let steam off. Um, and back in those days, you know, that's that was the norm. You know, and but it's no different to what it is today. There were some players what couldn't take a bollocking. Yeah. Um, Andy McCulloch said he was going absolutely b- ballistic. He's going to get a right bollocking. In fact, I'm still going to give him a bollocking. And Andy's laughing. But if you watch the game, you'll see him at half time waiting for me to come off pitch, yeah. and he said, "You're going to get a bollocking." When you get me. <laughs> um, and he, I remember going mad, you know, and he said to me. Even though it was a great goal, even though you scored, you know, the simple thing and the easy thing was to pass that ball. I said, but what if you scored? It's true that, you know. <laughs> it is incredible. And uh, Silky put something up earlier today, but he's not going to post anything about football because as soon as he posts something, you get all these es- ex- experts come on and telling him how football should be played and what he should be saying and about certain players and some of the players he's represented. And you do, you, unless you've actually played the game, you have not got a clue about what goes on in the game. And it's the professionals that know what goes on. Professionals give their opinions. This is what we do the current view for. This is what social media is great for, to learn from the professionals. The thing is, uh, I, see both, I see both sides of that, mate. Yeah. You play, uh, the pundits and the, the fans don't see, well, the pundits do. Or the ones what's played at the um, football level, especially with with strong character managers. Um, hmm. The fans have got a right to give the expressive opinion. Of course they have. But they do not know exactly what's gone off, and it's so easy for for somebody to turn around and say so and so, so and so, because regardless what anybody thinks, you know, I was never. I mean, Jack, Jack put up that um, a funny, no, I was never a funny sort of lad to handle. Mm. You know, they would say something, managers, and then has anybody got anything to say? So I would say something. Yeah. And as soon as you said it, you knew what was coming mm. because I wasn't agreeing with what they want you to do. That's why the COVID. Yeah. Why the COVID? Though, mm. You know, certain people, but with the, with the COVID, only wanted a certain thing out. And we all had to fall in line with it. Mm. It's you know, about questioning and, the narrative, questioning yeah. what the manager is asking you to do. Well, why well, do you want to do that, boss? Let's have a, a conversation Jack, about it. Jack had won everything in the game. Yep. Will Cup a lot. That doesn't mean that didn't give me a right to 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 to, to if he's asked me a question. Absolutely. Or has anything got to say? Yeah. Now he could turn around and say, well, I love it would turn around and say, you know something, I respect your opinion. But I'm the boss. Yep. And this what goes on, okay? You know, and that's the difference with, with Cluffy and Jack. And I love this. I love I love nights out with Jack more than any other manager because he would have laughed. Yeah. You know. Um it's like anything else, being in a marriage, you know you're not all gonna you're not always gonna agree, are you? Of course you won't. You know. So you know, the, the reason why I don't put things about Sheffield because what 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 uh, Baz is saying, Silk is saying, you know, you, you, you can't please them all and you please one and then you get other people uh, arguing and, you know, you're trying to, you know, you, but all I do now is just, they're entitled to opinion, so of course they I are. like it. They're entitled to opinion, but they should be careful what they're saying because they, they, you're right, they don't know what they're saying or what not know. They Absolutely. don't know what, they don't know what's gone off. Jack used to say to me, you know, why don't you listen to what I tell you? I said, Jack, in my head, I've got you 
when I'm on that football pitch, inside my head, telling me, don't do this, don't do that. And my brain is telling me the opposite. Yeah. Because you, what happens when you get that ball, something like me, don't forget, uh, was a dribbler with a ball, run with a ball. Can I just stop you for a minute? Yep. When you had the ball at your feet, you had no idea where you was going to go, what you were going to do with exactly. it, did you? Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Well, when I say I had no idea, but the first thing what came into my head, I knew I'd always got the pace to beat him. Yep. Right? And I do, what I do, I try to explain, they keep telling me games change. No, the wording has changed. Yep. You know, people pass it in my day, some people run with it. And what I, what I didn't know is this, if you run with the ball, it puts, it, especially at pace, it put uh, the people um, or the defenders under pressure. Correct. When you look at the goal I posted up today, I knew what I was doing. Yeah. Because if you watch, if you watch if you, after you've done it tonight, watch it, and you can see me keep looking. Because I see Granty, mm. who's thrown me the ball. You taught in football is send them away from goal. And that's what Sheffield United were doing. Yeah. All right. But I was making sure that they couldn't get the. If I got my hand up, making sure they couldn't come round me to nick the ball, right? And it, I just waited when I thought there was a gap there for me to use accelerate. Yep. And I saw it. And but you're right, what you're saying. Once you set off on a run with a ball, you know it's like the guy, the guy last night, Sheffield United. Oh, and died. Yeah. And died in. <laughs> you know he knew what he was doing, but how you do it because you're having to, your brain's having to kick, kick over quickly. Yeah. Because somebody else, you know, you beat one, something else was coming in. So you, you, you're trying to make that decision, which way do I go? So the part of it is, you're right. Because you, the first thing some of them, a Tottenham player would have said to him, you lucky, and I'm going to swear because this is what they used to say, you lucky bastard. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, mm. and you start laughing, you know. No you look there, son. No because, look there, son. <laughs> I, I so, wouldn't you? Yeah. They understood him. Yeah. Because the first thing Tony, I mean, I knew Tony Kenworthy it well before um, <laughs> we played United. People thought we, you know, we didn't, we, we got on. Yeah. Tony came to my house. He stopped at my house when he went United. Uh, he split from his missus, stopped at my house for a couple of nights. You know. But, but nice go that goal. Tony, Tony Kenworthy said it was a great goal, but it was shocking by us. Mm hmm. But he's right, because it was a great goal from our point of view, yeah, and a yeah. bad goal from their point of view. But you were right. Nobody's wrong in that, because when you're doing things, you're doing them, especially when you're doing them at pace. Yeah. You know. Uh, but the, what I took from that goal last night was the control. Yeah. He had the ball tight to his feet, and if you got that tight to your feet and you can control the ball, right, then it's easier. Right, and when you do it, I mean, all great players will tell you, you can't, you can't show people how to do that. No, not at all. And that's what I'm saying. When I say you don't know what you're doing, um, what I'm saying is, you get the ball and you do it instinctively. You don't yes. know where it's going to take you, but you're going, no. right, I'm taking on him. I'm now, seeing that's what, the, that's and that's what question. happens. That's the right question. You yeah. don't know where it's going to take you. No, you don't know. You can't. Right. Whereas. Right, I scored a goal. The best goal I've ever scored was for Forest. Not against Sheffield United when we won 6 1. That was a Fulham. great goal. Right? Mm. Up full. Yep. Right? But everything with Cluffy used to say to me, run with the ball. Nobody will touch you. Mm. Jack would go ballistic. Yeah. Pass it. Pass it. <laughs> you know, because he was frightened to death if I lost it. Yep. And they counterattacked us. It put us under pressure. But again, it's philosophies of managers, I isn't it? I, I understood him. Mm. Right? But it's frustrating because two personalities, him and me, are going to clash. Absolutely. You're going to clash. Absolutely. And again, Jack Charlton was a defender. Brian Clough was an attacker. Cloughy yeah. knew exactly what you were going to do because he would have done exactly the same. Uh, magic moments. Tell you, say, what have you sourced for us this week? And yeah, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop it <laughs> because the, uh, was it Solomon at Fulham? Scores, I don't believe against Leeds. Yeah. Bend it in the corner. Mm. I'm going with that. Then I'm going with uh, De Bruyne. Oh, that pass. 
well, not only the pass, but yeah. the goal. Yeah, yeah. Jack did brilliant. Jack did brilliant to give, mm. you know, what he did. And then bought, uh, the Bruyne got it. And, I mean, that must be 50, 50 yards out. Yeah. Not last pace in place. Yeah. Right? Yep. And then the, 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 the magic moments and goals, what I looked at on Saturday, is because you, you, you're looking for um, magic moments, ready for Tuesday night, Wednesday night, as it happens, it's Thursday night tonight. Yep. And then I watched, I watched the uh, end daily score the goal last night and I thought how do I take this away from them two right? but I'm going to give it to Endide because he dropped his shoulder two or three times they kept the ball uh, tight against him and there's, there's always diamonds in lower leagues if you're willing to go and look at it absolutely and so I'm going for that um, but it is, it is difficult isn't it Oh, it certainly is. I, I remember him in the World Cup because I said to to Woody, we we do our World Cup diary, and I said, I fancy Morocco. I do. Well, you've got Cher that plays for him. I think you've got Ben Rama that that plays for Morocco, and you've got this Endai that plays for uh, Sheffield United. I didn't realise he was Senegalese. I thought he was Moroccan, but I've watched him a few times, and we've said this and identified him on the podcast. What a player he is. He's got great skills. He's got phenomenal ability. He's a Premier League player. He's a player that can play in, in any team. Without any question, he's still there. He, could, he could play in Premier League with better he's, players. And no league. disrespect to that. I'm not knocking any United players because no? yeah. I'm pleased for Eki. They're a good footballing team. And at yeah. times, they, out, they outplayed Tottenham mm. last yeah. night. Yeah. Um, Burnley are the best team in the league. It's, Without a doubt. It, it's fascinating uh, to see uh, people turn around and say that uh, I can only coach with the players I've got. I know, it's incredible. Well, it? Burnley's not a big club. It's always been a good club. Yeah, and it's won, it's won uh, the old first division. Twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 17,000 people there, is there? Something um, like that. I mean, it's an incredible amount of support. Yeah. 70,000. You know, they might get about 20-odd thousand when they're in Premier League again. Mm. Uh, but no, it, there's diamonds in these leagues if you're willing to look at them. If I was playing manager of Sheffield Wednesday, I'd be looking, you know, uh, in conference, and I'd be looking in um, for, oh, for the League 2 one because there, there'll be a little diamond there what could go into that team. 100%. You could improve. And this is right. what annoys me when managers go on about, you know, we need to spend a lot of money. We need to buy these big players. Well, all these big players, guess what? They were small players once upon a time and they develop and they start somewhere. And good managers, good scouts, good coaches Listen, bring them in and develop Jack, them and brush them up. And Jack in time will say to me, did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. I said, Jack, I can repeat word for word. Right? And you've just mentioned there, all these big players at some point were small players. Yeah. Right? Silky tells Kevin Keegan about a player. So don't anybody ever tell me I don't listen. Absolutely. I'll listen to everything what you yeah. tell me. Mm -hmm. Right? Sending him to play uh, to watch a player at Wolves. Right? And you tell him he weren't up to it. And it was Zidane. He'd, he'd, wa he'd watched him and, um, and Kevin come back to Silk and said, yeah. I haven't seen him. But yeah, but but the, the, the person who was sent to watch yeah. him play went up to it. But but what he said was, Wolves were at the time bottom of the championship. He's not good enough to play for Wolves. And 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 Silk said, and we've got it on our Maverick tails. Kevin, you made the biggest mistake ever. And it was in the Dins of Dan. And he also had Georgie Weyer, and he yeah. couldn't get George Weyer a team in this country. And this is the problem. In this country, with some of the clowns that are running circuses, sometimes, it defies some, belief. Sometimes, and Silk will understand what I'm saying here, mm. next time you speak to him, you know, you can say that. If I said to somebody, he's a player of him, because it's me saying it, they don't want to know. Well, I'm, not saying every, I'm not saying everybody, mm. right? Books. There'll be players that, because they'll be saying, oh, he's only pushing him because he's wanting to make it crust. No, 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 it's telling you, have a, have a good look at him. 
And I guarantee you, Silk will put a player what he thinks is good enough for that football club. Of course he will. Go the one what he thought were good enough for Arsenal, Man United, Barcelona. Mm. That's what he'd be sending him. Yeah. And he yeah. also said about Georgie Weyer, he was the greatest cook he's ever known. <laughs> he, he was fantastic. He said, I don't know what he was better, as a footballer or as a cook. So he must have been a fantastic, uh, fantastic cook, in the a kitchen. Great... Absolutely, because he was a great player. Uh, we have talked about Burnley and that goal that Burnley scored the weekend. Absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. I mean, it was pretty was much... Some a, great oh, goals, oh, just team great goals. Ball. They're just no. popping about. They're fantastic they, to watch. They play football at that level at a small club because the guys, what anybody tells me, it's a nice club, is Burnley. Yeah. Always been a good family club. Yep. Always. So I'm not knocking Burnley. What I'm trying to say is what he's done there is phenomenal. Absolutely. Right? I was hoping when I saw Sean, Sean, Sean Dyche's first performance for, for Everton against Arsenal. I've never seen Everton play as well as that. Yeah. And work as... Right? And look what's happened since. Absolutely. 100%. You know, and and that, like last night, and, and 4-0. What I would turn around and say to anybody, if you're going into a football club, yeah. I don't want to hear you tell me, this is not your team. No, well, not at all. If it's not your team, you shouldn't have joined it. That's firstly. 100%. Secondly, uh, wait until I get my play, players in and then judge me. Well, even though I've given you a cut, I'd sack you after them two uh, answers you've given. Yeah. Because your job is to get the best out of anybody, and if you don't think that they're good enough, then replace the player. What? They... Stop saying they're not good enough. They're not this. Have a good look at them. Assess them. And if they're not good enough, do you know what? Make them better. What Coach did them. I say? Exactly. What did Coach I them. say about Ten Hag? Yeah. Coach him. Great said, example. Watch him come in. Yeah, what, right example. Said, when he came in, I said, watch this. He'll stand back. He'll assess who he thinks is good enough and who's not. Yeah. Listen, that is not only a brave decision, that's a dangerous decision. Yeah. Because you're talking about, arguably, the greatest footballer of all time. Yeah. And I've said arguably because the greatest footballer I've ever seen is George Best. Yeah. He's right. certainly one of the best in modern times. I think that's fair to say. Right. He wouldn't well, be my top ten of all time, but, but he's no, but a great I, player in modern times. I said, yep. arguably. Uh, absolutely, 100%. Right. And what I'm trying to say is, that's a brave decision. Massive. Right, to do what he did. A 100%. I agree with him 100% about it. Mm. None of us, not one of us, can turn around and, uh, and criticise Ronaldo. You can criticise him for his petulance towards the end of his career, right? Walking down the tunnel. I've done it, mm. right? But we're talking about somebody here what's a billionaire. Yeah. At 36, getting older, he's there now to help the young younger players and give them the advice that the, the, they need to help the football team. Mm -hmm. He, he realised that with Vinaldo in the team, this ain't going to work for two reasons. The young lads would be a bit frightened if they gave the ball away. Yeah. Secondly, uh, his work rate is nowhere near as as it would be as a as a twenty one year old or a twenty four year old, right? But look how he's turned that round. And and all all yeah, if any young young if any of you young managers out there listen to this, I don't give a damn what it is. Try and win it, right? And the most important thing in a football match is winning the next game. Absolutely. Southampton, not Southampton, but the person in charge of Southampton Football Club is a disgrace. And well done, Grimsby. I'm not yep. taking nothing away from Grimsby. Right? You're losing week in and week out. And you're chopping and changing your team in an FA Cup, which could get you to a quarter final. It's a disgrace. Complete disgrace. 100% agree. I have put up a couple of posts over the last 24 hours, 48 hours too. I'm, I'm so annoyed with these clubs because all they're playing for is Premier League points. They all want to be in the Premier League and get the money. It's all about money. It's about the league agreed. It isn't about the footballers trying to play in cup quarterfinals, semifinals, FA Cup finals, League Cup finals. They're not interested in that. I think it's an absolute disgrace. The fans are being shortchanged. I think the fans should oh, go on strike. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And also as well, when they put things over from like the Premier League to um, the League Cup final, i.e. Pope got um, sent off in a Premier League game, but he then got banned for a League Cup final. So what they what they what they're judging apples with apples and they're saying it's a, it's the same kind of competition. One's a cup, one's a league game. Well, in the Premier League and in any game of football, you must always play your best team that's available. In the cups, clubs haven't. Any club, and they're all guilty of this, not just Premier League clubs, but championship clubs as well. I would ban all clubs that play weakened sides from all competitions, and that includes Europe. I, they would be banned I for two agree years. With you 100%, but you know as well as I do, you know, the Premier League is run by the uh, Premier Super League rich. Owners. Super rich. So right. all these footballers are just playing to get Premier League points. And if you are a player that you don't play for Man City, you don't play for Liverpool, you don't play for Manchester United, or arguably at the moment Arsenal, you are playing for nothing because you will never get to a cup final. All you're playing for is to play in the Premier League and try and get to fourth place in the league. I think it's an I'll, absolute disgrace. I'll repeat myself again. Mm. Well done, Grimsby. Yes, absolutely. Right? Fantastic. You're now in a quarter final of an FA Cup. 100%. Brilliant, brilliant. But I'm looking beyond this. You've a chance to be manager of Southampton. Yep. Right? You're leaving out three or four of your main players. Yep. Which could, right, if you played them and they would four or five nil, you're making a statement. Correct. They haven't got the confidence. They haven't got the players. There's only one team in the, in the Premier League capable of doing it, Manchester City. Yeah. Without it really affecting... Right. And Pep go, does it all back. the time. Let's go, yeah. let's go back to what you said about uh, keeping your Premier League status. Yep. I don't give a damn. Listen, these teams go down uh, season in and season out, right? What play it cagey to try and keep in the uh, Premier League. Pointless. It does not work. No, pointless. It does not work. What Forest have done, right, is by... Playing the strongest team, they're moving up the table. Yep. What happens when they went into the FA Cup? They got slaughtered by was it Blackpool? Who oh, can't win a game? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. They chopped mm -hmm. and changed his team. Correct. Yeah. And there's nobody. Listen, I stuck up for Steve Cooper. For me, that was a disgrace because the manager who I played for there was a guy called Brian Clough, mm -hmm. and he said to us, and I, I played in. Uh, a county cup competition for Forest against Notts County. Yeah. Right? I'm like, I didn't see him go mad. Never saw him go mad. He came into that dressing room. He said, right, this is the most important game we're going to play this season. Yeah. A county cup game. Yep. And we won it that year. And you won the Anglo-Scottish. Yeah. Because he Cloughy took to win serious. every trophy. 100%. Right? I've heard them all again. All them what don't win nothing. All the most useless of management. Yep. Right? Turn about, it's a Mickey Mouse cup. Let me tell you something. As a manager, go and win it. Did you see those players after they won that uh, final? Yeah, I did. Did you see how happy they were? Did you see how late they were? Yeah. Did you see how excited they were? Yep. Did you see how proud they were? Because they've won a cup. They've won a cup what final. What do you play for? Winning cup finals. Memphis. I mean, we've all done it too. It's to play, but... Uh, it kids. was a dream to play at Wembley. Yeah, I mean, a dream to play for your country. Of course it is. I mean, if kids, when we used to play football, we got to cup finals, we won cups. You f you feel euphoric. You've won a cup. You've played in a cup final. That's what you want to do when you put your boots on. Whether you're playing in a Sunday league or a Saturday league or playing professionally, that's what you want to do. You want to win cups. You want to be the best. You want to win honours. You don't want to just play in a league game and Listen, try and get fourth place. Pathetic. All of them bottle jobs. Fan, All of them are bottle jobs. If I was a football fan, I want to watch uh, young players coming through. Correct, Sam. In yeah. the youth team. I go watch the youth team. Yeah. Do I think that they should be given the chance? Of course they should. Mm. If they're they the right to get in the team. Yeah. And if they, if they earn the right to get in the team and they're doing well, leave them in. Mm. Right? But don't just go and like, like 
five or six players, leave five or six players out, then fetch them in. And if it doesn't work out for them, then people are slagging them off. They're not up to it. They've not been playing on a regular basis at that level, at that pace. Exactly. You know, when you play the first team, the game is at a different level of pace. Yeah. And every time you move up to a, uh, an A league, right, people... People always said to me, "What do you when they were coming through? What do you find?" I said, "The pace is different." They looked at me, gone out because they didn't think I know. And that what he want the pace. Yeah. And then after that, you know, uh, can you control that ball? Mm. Can you play against these players? Yeah. Are you fearful of playing against you know uh, higher quality players? I never listen. I respected Manchester United. I respected whoever I played for, uh, played against. But I used to say to lads. They've got 90 minutes here to get Man United, to get Liverpool, we're better than them. Not big headed, not arrogant, we're better than them. But if you right? don't believe I that, Derby, Man United, we got you beat shouldn't be on a pitch. We got beat 4-0. Mm. They absolutely battered us. And by the way, we beat Liverpool 4-2 four, four yeah. when Liverpool were their prime that same season. Mm. Right? So that it, it does happen. But I never was fearful of whoever we're playing for again. Absolutely. But I always respected them because they are great players you're playing against. Yeah. Barcelona have just taken. Oh, but they looks as though they've just had a goal disallowed. Real Madrid have had a goal disallowed. This could be a classic. El Clasico. Um, Barcelona versus Real Madrid in the Copa del Rey. Uh, Buendia's goal when he come on, I thought he changed the game. I'm a big fan of Buendia. Uh, Connor Cody, I mean, uh, he looked as though he was running in treacle but, um, and turning like the QE2 in a canal. But uh, Wendy, I think he's got a great change of pace, low centre of gravity. Took him on the left and cracked it in. Great result for Aston Villa. And also Ben Howe's goal, uh, House, sorry, Ben House's goal for Lincoln against Forest Green. Great goal. I thought the way he just put his... He just put his foot on that ball. I've he seen some fantastic it. goals this, yeah. this uh, week. He dropped That's his foot. Unbelievable. He, he just dropped his foot on the ball, didn't he? And it just bang. You ain't stopping that. What a goal. And I, I just thought that was sublime. Some great goals that I've seen, but that goal, because I do like to, the EFL on their Facebook page, they do put their five goals up. And I always put them onto the current view, onto our group. And, but that was the one that I really enjoyed, Ben House's goal for Lincoln against Forest Green. We did talk about Manchester United. They have won uh, the first bit of silverware. By the way, that Barcelona goal has stood. It's 1-0 to Barcelona. And Ten Hag was getting a little bit of stick from his dancing. I mean, come on. He's won the cup. He's turned United around. If he wants to dance all around Wembley... You can dance. You're a winner, son. Well it's done. It's England. It's the woke. And it's also that woke, that Piers Morgan. Why the hell they give that donut a microphone? I heard him on Talk Sports again this morning, and I just instantly, I turned it off. I don't want to listen to him. Gary Neville is another muppet who drives me up the wall and insane. And as for Gary Lineker, last night... The closing oh, you started, stages. You started to wake up about him, have you? No, I've, I've, I liked him as a football player. Um, you know, there's things that I agree with, things that I don't agree with. Yes, but I was, was, yes, 100% on that. He was talking about championship teams in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup and he said, do you think it was because of the World Cup? No, Gary, it's mm -hmm. because all the Premier League teams play weakened sides and that's why they're getting beaten. But there isn't a player, former player, pundit, that's got say. the balls to say that. And if you yeah. can't, if you're not brave enough to say it, shut up because you sound like a prize brat. That's what, uh, that's what the city did. He told them, no, I'm, you're not telling me what to say. Exactly. Exactly, hundred percent. No. So, and I won't turn whether the people like me or not. I won't turn me back on my people. No, hundred percent. You know, yeah. I will put things on that Facebook like I've been doing. Yes, you right? have. Well, it got me into trouble. Yeah. But I was putting the truth on. Yeah. I was putting the truth on. I mean, mm -hmm. by the way, it's turned out right what I've put on. Absolutely, Everything. absolutely. Everything. So, but right? 
But two. And, listen, I like Gary Lineker, great pace. Yeah. Not a great touch, but no. it, what he his skill for me, what his timing. Yeah, and, and his ability and his knack of getting in the right place at the right time and scoring. <laughs>